Hello guys, welcome to UFC 260. Stipe vs Francis Ngannou, second time fight prediction brought to you by MMA Life. Uh, we'll break down the entire main card quickly and then move, move on to the main event. So starting from the first fight, Jimmy Mulaki vs Kama Verdi. Quite frankly, I haven't seen Jimmy Mulaki fight uh, apart from his last couple of fights, which were decision losses. Uh, Kama Verdi is a precision striker and there is a huge difference between the significant strikes landed per minute as well as strike accuracy. Kama Verdi is the minus 130 favorite and I think it'd be my pick too. Considering that uh, Jamie has been coming off to losses, his confidence, uh, confidence might be low, but it depends how he takes it. They were both uh, unanimous decision losses, so he's not getting finished uh, that easily. However, the way Kama strikes, uh, I am predicting either a first round or a second round TKO or a stoppage. Moving on to the second one, Gillian Robertson vs Miranda Maverick. Ah, this is the classic grappler vs striker. Uh, Gillian Robertson stab bit more experience in UFC than Miranda Maverick. However, she is coming off uh, her loss against Tyler Santos and had two wins before that. Uh, of course, Jiu Jitsu is a strong, uh, strong strength, big pardon, and uh, I think that's going to be her key to victory. She has to take the fight to the ground because Miranda, even though she has a couple of rear naked choke uh, wins in her uh, fights in Invicta, I don't think uh, she wants to grapple with her Jiu Jitsu black belt. She would uh, really be much more comfortable in striking. Another thing that Miranda is a southpaw. So, southpaw strikers against orthodox strikers who are not as comfortable, I'd give uh, her the upper hand, as well as the huge difference between significant strikes landed per minute. Even though her accuracy is slightly low, her volume is so high that she's definitely going to start damage from early on. And even her last fight uh, that she won against Liana Jojua because of a doctor stoppage, wherein she busted Liana's nose open with with her left elbow. So, I think that's a very realistic possibility for this fight as well. A TKO stoppage, uh, very likely. Round 1, round 2, could be even round 3. Or oh, Miranda takes a easy unanimous decision victory. Gina Robertson will... Only way she wins is through submission. So, my pick will be Miranda Maverick. Moving on to the next one. Yeah, this one is the event I am looking forward to. Sean O'Malley and Thomas Almeida. Sean O'Malley is minus 330 favorite. Apparently, Sean O'Malley is self proclaimed undefeated. He thinks the Cheeto era uh, loss was a freak accident and doesn't credit it as a typical loss. So, that's Sean O'Malley for you guys. But the guy's really striking, is really good, it's really unorthodox, is very uh, creative. And he doesn't let the opponents read his patterns. So, Thomas Almeida is a nice tight guarded Muay Thai style traditional fighter. He's southpaw, which is uh, good, but unlikely that uh, Almeida can outstrike Sugar Shan. If he mixes it up, it will be interesting, but I don't think so. It's going to be mainly a strike contest, and Omali might outstrike Almeida in every round. Uh, it would be the spectacular knockout that Omali looks for, or if uh, Almeida, you know, toughens it out, he might, uh, Sugar Sean might get a decision victory. Uh, two guys in this uh, main card are having their backs against the wall. It's very likely that if they lose this fight, they might be cut from UFC, and Almeida is one of them. So the pick for this one, Sugar Sean Omali, hopefully by. Uh, first round TKO. Moving on to the main co main event Tyrone Woodley versus Vicente Luque. Uh, one thing which is really amazing is Vicente Luque is the minus 240 favorite, and quite rightly so. Tyrone Woodley is coming off three consecutive losses, and it's not the three losses but the manner in which he has been losing. He has actually lost almost 15 consecutive rounds. Five rounds against Guzman, five rounds against Gilbert Burns, 
and almost five rounds against Colby Covington. The fifth round was a stoppage because of rib injury. And I think I will make a full breakdown on his rib injury soon. Uh, so Woodley, I don't think the rib injury would be playing uh, into this fight in any way. Uh, if he is given at least six months for it to heal, he should be good to go. But uh, the main issue Woodley has been having is mental. He is just not pulling the trigger. He doesn't attack the way he used to. He has lost his ferocity, which he had when he became the champ. But uh, like I said, there are two fighters uh, who have their back against the wall. Almeida was one and Tyron Woodley is the other one. He may not be considering it, but very likely that if he loses this one, he might be on his way to Bellator. Vicente Luque, his, his striking is just fantastic. Significant strikes are five, more than five. Accuracy, more than 50%. And he's not interested in takedowns or submissions. This guy comes to fight. He likes to strike. And apart from that, uh, Wonderboy uh, Thompson loss, which of course, uh, who wouldn't lose to Wonderboy striking non-stop like that. Uh, Luque is hard to beat. Uh, if it's a pure striking match because he's got a granite chin on him and he fights till the last bell and he is going to make it tough. I think uh, Luke takes this fight by decision. I hope Woodley wins this and if he has still uh, some prime left in him, this is the last chance. If not, uh, this could be the last of him that we see. My pick, Luke by a decision. Now, finally coming to the main event, Stipe Miocic versus Francis Ngannou. I agree, Francis has improved in his last four fights and he has been coming off four consecutive first round, not even first round, first minute knockouts, but the odds are baffling to me. Stipe is still the underdog. Ah, why is this guy so underrated? What will it take for people to start giving him the respect he deserves? Stipe by now is not only the heavyweight goat, but he should be in conversation for goats of all weight categories uh, in MMA. But uh, yeah, that the odds are what they are. Uh, I was waiting to make this breakdown because I wanted to know what their weighing weights are, and I think I knew Stipe would be doing this. That Stipe comes in at 233, and uh, that's a very light Stipe. He did this against Daniel Cormier in the second and third fight and in the third fight he was much lighter moving much more swiftly and that's the kind of quality type and weight that is suitable for a five round fight. Francis Ngannou on the other hand weighing, weighing in at 263 pounds he's gonna make most of each pound of muscle that he can carry. Francis Ngannou essentially needs to land just once but he has only the first round or maybe early part of the second round to land those things. If he cannot attack Stipe within the first round, if Stipe survives round one, the chances of Francis knocking Stipe out drastically go down. And one thing which does not work in Francis's favor is his octagon time. He has not been able to spend time in the octagon just because he's been knocking guys out within 20, 40, 60 seconds. The longest fight he has had among the last four fights is uh, what 71 seconds. That's crazy. So, no matter how hard he's been training, uh, once he steps foot in the octagon, once round one ends, round two ends, Steep is still gonna be there, his volume is still gonna be there, his movement, head movement, defense, everything's gonna be there. He's gonna mix up the takedowns, but how Francis reacts in those rounds, that's going to be the key. And even though he's been practicing a lot of wrestling with Kumar Uzman in his corner and his coach uh, Eric Nixik, but uh, Steep is. He, his strategies, his fight IQ is way, way more superior. And uh, I could be wrong, Francis could take Steepe's lights out in round one like Gore made it. But uh, I think I got Steepe. Steepe is a very smart fighter. He's got a lot of experience behind him. He has already been there once. He already has done this thing against Francis once. And uh, he knows he just has to do it one more time. And even if Francis has improved, so has Steepe and his movement is better than ever. His footwork is something that is the most underrated thing. That's what uh, does not allow big power punches like Francis land those clean, big 
punches or you know any other strikes so stipe i think takes a unanimous uh, decision victory and uh, once he does he should be the undisputed heavyweight good and hopefully makes a rise in pound for pound rankings as well so yeah that's it that's my breakdown hope you guys like it and let's see after the event is done how many of my picks were uh, spot on and how wrong was i which i can be but uh, i am just having fun no matter who wins i hope the fights are good do like the video subscribe me for more such fight breakdowns and i'm going to make a medical breakdown video on woodley's injuries uh, the rib fracture uh, soon and might also make a video about the calf injury uh, slash nerve paralysis that um, sugar shano mali had against tito vera because even though it's a loss but it was definitely a free accident it's not easy to hit the peroneal nerve you cannot aim for that nerve uh, every time so it's sort of uh, a luck thing that uh, cheetos kick uh, hit the nerve but yeah a full breakdown will be coming soon so do press the bell icon once you are done subscribing so that you'll be notified as soon as i post that video